Despite their extinction giving rise to our ascent as the dominant human species, I still can't help rooting for our ancient cousins, the Neanderthals. And so it was with a bit of sadness that I read an interesting new paper that appeared to debunk a beautiful theory that they had laid lost members of their community to rest with floral tributes. The paper, called Shanidar et ses fleurs, Reflections on the Palynology of the Neanderthal Flower Burial Hypothesis, was authored by Chris Hunt, Emma Pomeroy and others and published in the Journal of Archaeological Science. It re-evaluates the burial of a Neanderthal skeleton that was found in a partial fetal position and surrounded by flower pollen. The individual, known as Shanidar IV, was unearthed in 1960, and the supposed flower burial forced a reappraisal of the assumed nature of our Neanderthal cousins. Far from being the savage, brutish killers they were believed to be, with Neanderthal being a byword for such traits, the discovery presented them as caring, community-minded and empathetic, with a reverence for their dead and a possible belief in an afterlife so much so that they would pick bouquets of flowers to adorn the final resting place of their fallen friends or relatives. But the new report regrettably appears to debunk the notion of floral funeral customs. However, it still acknowledges that Homo neanderthalensis may still have been empathetic beings with organised post-mortem rituals and careful handling of the dead. A species that, due to ancient cross-species procreation, many modern humans still share a genetic relationship with, Neanderthals are thought to have died out around 45,000 years ago after roaming the Earth for more than 300,000 years. Their longevity as a species makes modern humans' time as the dominant, and indeed only, human species appear like the blink of an eye in chronological terms. During the late 1950s and early 1960s, Ralph Seletsky discovered the skeletons of ten Neanderthal men, women and children at Shanidar Cave in the Zagros Mountains of Kurdistan in northern Iraq. Surrounding one of the bodies, the aforementioned Shanidar IV, clumps of ancient pollen were discovered. These were thought by the archaeologists to be the pollen sacks from flowers that were cut for the purpose of honouring or adorning the dead. Professor Chris Hunt from Liverpool John Moores University in England said, Although the evidence was subsequently questioned, the story was spectacular enough that it is still found in most archaeology textbooks. However, recent excavations next to Seletsky's dig could change all that. It has been suggested that bees left the pollen deposits rather than them being some ancient remnant of a flower-based mourning ritual. As part of their research, Professor Hunt et al. identified two additional Neanderthal subjects, one of them known as Shanidar Z. They were immediately adjacent to and beneath where Shanidar IV was discovered. They also found bones and teeth around six inches below the remains. The three sets of remains seemed to have been carefully placed in a gully through which occasional water flow had taken place close to a large rock. The relative depths of the remains indicate that they were placed at different times over many years, possibly even centuries. Shanidars 4 and Z appear to have been placed in roughly the same position, facing out of the cave. The third body was not as complete as the others, but its head was found to be similarly oriented eastwards. Professor Hunt said, What is becoming very clear is that at least three times Neanderthals came and camped on the sediments beside this gully and placed a body into it. Although it is very difficult to infer traditions from archaeology, this looks like a tradition of disposing of the dead in a very similar way, and it's obviously with care, because two of the bodies are very complete. He added, It is very sad that we've demolished the flower burial story, because it is a lovely story, but there's something else going on here, which I think in many ways is just as remarkable. The academic believes the findings imply that funeral traditions were handed down over generations, with mythological stories and symbolism guiding these practices. The paper's abstract read, Pollen lumps associated with the skeleton of the Shanidar for Neanderthal were interpreted by the excavator as evidence for purposeful burial with flowers. This was one of several findings from Shanidar Cave that helped to shape modern perceptions of Neanderthals as sharing empathic characteristics with Middle Paleolithic Homo sapiens, modern humans. Here the available evidence is reviewed critically from a paleontological viewpoint. It seems likely that at least some of the pollen clumps were emplaced by nesting solitary bees, although other mechanisms may also have been involved. Shanidar IV remains of notable importance, however, in being part of a tight cluster of remarkably complete and deliberately emplaced Neanderthal skeletal remains. Turning to the study's conclusions, the paper read, Much still remains to be discovered about the behaviour of the Neanderthals. Modern understanding owes a huge debt to the pioneering work of Ralph Zaletsky and his co-workers at Shanidar Cave.
However, whilst gripping the imagination of generations of archaeologists and anthropologists, the flower burial hypothesis has not been substantiated by this review. The conclusion also mentioned that the pollen around the Shanidar for Neanderthal shows flattening and corrosion. This is consistent with it being ancient. We can therefore discount the possibility that the pollen was introduced by Seletsky and his colleagues walking through pollen-rich pasture to the cave, and instead conclude that the pollen is likely to be approximately contemporary with the Neanderthal with which it is associated. Although some of the pollen clumps may have been anther-shaped, the presence of taxonomically mixed clumps is not consistent with these clumps of pollen being from the deposition of anthers, and therefore whole flowers. Instead, it is far more likely that the taxonomically mixed pollen was collected and deposited in clumps by bees. This makes it perhaps less likely that the monospecific clumps of pollen in the same samples resulted from activity by agents other than bees. The fact that, under modern conditions at least, the flowers represented in the Shanidar for pollen cannot be collected at the same time is another argument against the hypothesis of flowers being gathered at the time of death to be laid with the body. But there is a suggestion that some clumps contained immature pollen and might suggest more complex scenarios. However, it added, some things are still to be resolved, however. In particular, we need to establish why clumps of pollen were only recovered from three samples associated with Neanderthal remains, out of the 21 samples containing pollen analysed from the cave. The presence of wood fragments may also be worthy of further consideration, particularly because wood fragments are present within the fill of the body cavity of Shanidar Z. It concluded, our final reflection is that the debates around the flower burial may have in many respects obscured its most significant aspect, that it was part of a tight cluster of what our evidence suggests were emplaced bodies that is practically unique in the Neanderthal realm. The potential implications of this behaviour for Neanderthal's sense of space and place are probably the most intriguing aspect of the Shanidar cave Neanderthals, rather than whether an individual was buried with flowers. That's it for this video, don't forget to like, share and most importantly subscribe and you can also support the channel on Subscribestar via the link in the description or via YouTube Super Thanks. Thanks for watching, bye for now.